Good afternoon everybody, it's Rachel today from Lion Learners North Lincolnshire and hello from Mindy the Bearded Dragon. Mindy is on the move this afternoon because she's seen food, she knows there's food around so we're just trying to get her to say hello to us for a few minutes before she decides to go for a bit of a run. Now then, this week our videos are focusing on some more primary school science. It's from the Year 2 curriculum this time and we're learning about habitats. So this is part of the science curriculum for Year 2. Now there are many different habitats around the world of course. Woodland, grassland, seashore, ocean, rainforest, lots of different habitats and of course different animals can be found within different places because they found ways of managing to live well in certain conditions. Now the habitats we're going to focus on this week are deserts that's today. And we're also going to look at grasslands and rainforests. Hello, Mindy. Hello. Then on Friday, we're going to have a look at food chains. The food chains show us how plants and animals in a habitat are linked together. She's going to go for a bit of a run. I'm just going to bring her back over here into her little desert, see if she'll stay with us for a few more minutes, maybe let her have a few more mealworms. So, deserts cover about a fifth of the Earth's land. So there's a lot of desert around the world. Stay with us, Mindy. Now we think of deserts as being very hot and dry, don't we? But a desert doesn't actually have to be a hot place. A desert is just a place that doesn't get very much rainfall. So deserts can be cold. Some deserts are cold. Like the Gobi Desert in India. Other deserts, of course, are hot. Like the Sahara Desert in Africa. But the thing that deserts all share in common is that they are dry places. They don't get much rainfall. And of course, that makes it difficult for plants and animals to survive there. We all know that all plants and animals need water to survive and they need the right kind of food. A dry place obviously doesn't have much water and that makes it very difficult for plants to grow, doesn't it? And that means that there's less food for other animals to eat. But of course there are plants and animals that have made the desert their home and they've got special ways of managing to live in dry places. So animals that live in cold deserts have ways of surviving in the cold and the dry. Animals that live in hot deserts have ways of surviving in the hot, dry weather. Cactus, of course, we can see here. I've got two cactuses at the back here. They've found a way of living where many other plants can't. They don't need much water. The plants, the cactus plants are very good at holding water. They're very thick and waxy, and that stops stops them from drying out. And the spines on a cactus actually help the plant to collect water from the air and let it drip down to the roots. Well, Mindy is sticking around for us. I thought she was going to do a runner, but she's not. <laughs> so Mindy is, of course, a bearded dragon lizard, and she would live in the desert or in arid woodland in the centre of Australia. Arid woodland means dry woodland. So she'd be no good at living in the rainforest. She wouldn't like the wet weather there. And it could make her body quite poorly. 
being somewhere that's got a damp environment. It's not what her body needs. She needs a dry environment. She likes high temperatures. And the desert in Australia can get, well, it can get higher than 40 degrees. Mindy wouldn't really want it to be higher than 40 degrees. She'd like it to be maybe about 35 degrees, maybe a little bit hotter. She'd be basking in the sun then. If it gets too hot in the desert, she is able to dig. She's got little claws. She can dig herself a little hole in the ground to try and try and cool off. Just let her have a couple more mealworms. She shouldn't have too many. She's about had her fill there now. So what she would do to warm up, because she's a cold-blooded animal, her body, um, it's not good at generating its own heat she needs to be in a place that's warm enough for her body so she does like to be in a hot place so the desert in Australia is a good place for her she would like to sit upon the top of a big rock and bask in the sun all day long and the colour and the texture of Mindy's body means that she can sit in a sandy place or she can sit on a rock and she's quite well camouflaged she's quite a sandy colour isn't she so quite well camouflaged in the sand or on top of a big rock so she can hope to protect herself from predators. Of course if a predator does come along she's got her big beard. She uses air to puff up the skin underneath her chin and stick those spikes out and her body will go a lot more rigid and rounder and flatter and she'd stick those spikes out on the side of her body too. If a predator was coming along, wouldn't you, Mindy? To try and scare them off. Her skin's very dry and quite thick, and that helps her body to keep the moisture in as well. But she can go for a long time, like most desert animals, can go for a long time without food or water. Right, we're going to let Mindy go. We're going to let her go, and we're going to have a look at another animal. So we've got another lizard that would live in the desert. We're going to have a look at a gecko. So let's have a look in here. We'll have to just wake him up, I think. I'm sorry, James. Here's James the gecko. You might have met him in some of our other videos. He was wanting a bit of a nap, wasn't he? You don't have to come to us for long, James. There we are. So James would live in a different desert to Mindy. Come on, get your little head out. There we are. Just going to find somewhere to pop our camera up so we can have a good look at James and see if he'll come out for us and have something to eat like Mindy did. There we go. So he come from the desert in Asia, still a hot desert and maybe quite a rocky, rocky area of desert he would live in. Now unlike Mindy, James is nocturnal, there goes Mindy, <laughs> James is nocturnal so that means he's awake mostly at night. Mindy is what we call diurnal. She's awake in the daytime and she likes hotter temperatures than James, so she will bask in the sun to keep her body warm. Now James does like quite warm temperatures, but he doesn't like it too hot. So it's better for him to come out at night when the temperatures are a little bit cooler. In the daytime, he'll be hidden away, finding shade and shelter. We'll see if he wants a waxworm. You're going to eat for us, James. James will always eat a waxworm. He shouldn't have too many. He's doing all his waxworm eating on camera at the moment. He's starred in quite a few of our videos. And you can see he's got quite big eyes. They help him to see in the dark, of course. And just like Mindy, he can go for a long time without food and water. 
and he would eat any insects. He's a carnivore, he'll eat any insects that he can find in the desert. Crickets and locusts. He's having a look around to see if he's got any more waxworms here, but no, James, I think you've had your fill of waxworms. Find him somewhere to hide. He says, I'll come out at night. Thank you very much. Just one more minute, James, and then we can say goodnight to you. So a gecko's tail is a very special part of its body because a gecko can release its tail. If it's being chased by a predator and the predator grabs hold of its tail, the gecko can leave its tail behind and run off to live another day. They've got a very strong muscle at the base of their tail that they can contract. They can squeeze that together and let the tail go. It doesn't cause them too much of a problem. They can grow a new tail. But he doesn't want to have to do that, of course. A gecko's tail is very important to him. Because living in the desert, we said that they can go quite a long time without food or water. And what they do, they store extra fat in their tails. So if they have a time when they can't find much food or water, their body's okay. It can live off that excess stored fat in their tail. So he really doesn't want to lose his tail. He needs that. There we are, I think. We will let him try and find somewhere to have a little snooze before he goes back to his proper home and we're going to meet one more desert animal so who have we got next let's have a look he's called dave our next animal bye bye james and here is dave the depraisi hello dave he wants to come out So Dave is a depraisi, otherwise known as a fat-tailed gerbil. So just like James the gecko, he's got a funny tail too. He's got a little fat tail. There we go, can you see it? And just like James the gecko, he uses his tail to store extra fat and water. Desert animals do need ways of coping. If the weather gets extra, extra dry and there isn't much food or water to be found. So just like the gecko, that's what his tail is for. It helps him prepare for a time when there's not much food or drink available. Now the desert that he would live in, he would live in the northern Sahara desert. And he doesn't really want temperatures quite as hot as Mindy the lizard likes. Can't keep up with him. Finding a way out, are you, Dave? <laughs> He's a cheeky boy, he really is. So, he's living in maybe a place that's got sand and rocky outcrops. They like to burrow, so they do want somewhere they can dig. They cannot keep up with him. Back over here, Dave. There we go. And they will dig, maybe up to about a metre deep, obviously to keep themselves safe from predators. And also, that will help them keep cool if the weather does get too hot. His fur is quite a good colour for blending in in the desert. <laughs> it's really on the move. Dave is no good at being videoed, are you, Dave? He's much too fast for me. He's got his little sand bath there. They do like to have a bit of a clean, use the sand to clean their bodies and their fur. He's a very active chap, is our Dave. There we go. So he is, um, he's an omnivore. He likes to eat insects. So he does eat mealworms and crickets, but he also eats grains and fruit nuts and seeds 
you can see if we if we see his little nose again he's got quite a long nose for digging around for insects and there he is showing us exactly what he'd do in the desert he loves the sand he's playing in his sand pit now And he's off again. So, of course, he wouldn't have a wheel in the desert, would he? But they do cover quite a large distance, these deprises, when they're hunting around for food. They're quite active, so his wheel helps him to stay active and get plenty of exercise. There we are. So three desert animals today. The bearded dragon, the gecko, and Dave the Depressy. So we will be back tomorrow at two o'clock live and we're looking at grasslands tomorrow. So if you've got any children, especially in year one or two at primary school, who've been doing animal classification or habitats, if you want to have a look at our website, lionlearners.co.uk, we've got a homeschool page on there where we've got all the videos that we've been doing and we've got some worksheets and games on there for them as well to keep them busy but for now it's goodbye from Dave and goodbye from us and we'll see you at two o'clock tomorrow bye bye